the Court of Appeal, and its own decisions. The first concept is that rulings will not attach the other branch with one section of the Court of Appeal. Nevertheless, decisions are generally binding within each branch, particularly for the civil branch. The rule comes from the Young v. Bristol Aeroplan Co. Ltd. 1944, case and the only variations permitted are. Where in previous Court of Appeal cases there are contradictory opinions, the court can choose which one to obey and which one to ignore. Where there is a House of Lords, now Supreme Court, decision that effectively overrules a decision of the Court of Appeal, the Court of Appeal must follow the House of Lords slash Supreme Court's decision. Where the incurium decision was made, that is, carelessly or by accident because the court did not consider valid statutory legislation or another rule. The Court of Appeal Civil Division under Lord Denning tried to challenge the provision in the case of Young, saying it could modify it because it had taken the earlier decision. As Lord Denning said in Galley v. Lee, 1969 it was a self-imposed restriction and us who made it can also abolish it. This perspective was not held by the other judges in the Court of Appeal, as is shown by Russell LJ's comment in the same Galley v. Lee case where he said, the House of Lords' willingness to correct mistakes in the Court of Appeal renders it, in my judgment, redundant for the Court of Appeal. In Davis v. Johnson, 1979, however, the Court of Appeal failed to obey a ruling on the reading of the 1976 Domestic Abuse and Matrimonial Courts Act issued only days earlier. The matter was taken to the House of Lords on appeal where, where, while struggling with the particular understanding of the law, the statute lords found that the Court of Appeal needed to obey their own prior rulings and claimed that they reaffirmed the regulation in Young v. Bristol Aeroplane explicitly, firmly, and unanimously. Since this case, and perhaps more importantly, after Lord Denning's retirement in Young's case, the Court of Appeal has not contested the law, although it has made some use of the per incurium exemption permitted by Young's case. In Williams's v. Fawcett, 1986, the court refused to follow its own previous decisions because they were founded on a misconception of the laws of the county court governing the process for sending anyone violating court undertakings to prison. The court refused to follow a ruling that it had resolved in 1981 in Rickards v. Rickards, 1989. This was because the consequence of a House of Lords ruling had been overlooked in the previous case. Although the court did not follow its own previous decision, Lord Donaldson said that it would be reasonable for the Court of Appeal to refuse to follow a previous decision only in rare and exceptional cases. Rickards v. Rickards was known as a rare and unusual case because the dispute occurred over whether the court had the jurisdiction to consider the specific type of case. It was also very difficult to challenge the issue to the House of Lords. The Court of Appeal seems to have expanded the reach of the per incurium exception in R. v. Cooper. 2011. The limited or conventional interpretation of per incurium is that it is used only where the applicable legal regulations and or case authority have not been taken into account by the earlier trial. R. V. Cooper included the Crown Court case where a person accu accused of a sexual offense was barred from working with children or vulnerable adults. Under the Safeguarding Vulnerable Groups Act 2006, a new system was introduced, and it was not clear what procedure to follow. On the grounds that not all the relevant issues had been brought before the earlier trial, the Court of Appeal overruled an earlier decision on its own. This seems to be larger than failing to take the relevant legislation and proceedings into consideration. The Court of Appeal, Criminal Division As well as using the provisions from the case of Young, the Criminal Division may also refuse to follow its own previous ruling if the statute is misapplied or mistaken. An additional provision exists because the protection of citizens becomes involved in criminal proceedings. In R. V. Taylor, 1950, this concept was acknowledged. R. V. Gould, 1968, made the same point. Furthermore, in R. V. Spencer, 1985, the judges claimed that there should usually be no difference in the way in which the case was applied in the criminal division and in the civil division except that we should note that we may be grappling with the independence of the issue and that, if a divergence from jurisdiction is appropriate in the interests of justice for an applicant, the court should not be retreating from its decisions. In R. V. Simpson, 2003, a jury of five judges, the Court of Appeal, Criminal Division, overruled an earlier decision reached by a court of three judges on the basis that the statute was confused or misapplied. The case argued that a five-judge majority of the judiciary has the discretion to decide that a prior court of appeal, criminal division, ruling should not be viewed as binding. 
This added to the belief that a panel of five judges always had the right to deviate from a panel of three judges' earlier decisions. Nevertheless, the Court of Appeal itself found out in R. V. Magro, 2010, that Simpson had not reserved them the privilege to bypass a tribunal of three judges where that de decision was made following the complete debate and thorough review of the applicable constitutional requirements. The previous situation, in fact, should not be overruled when the effects of doing so would be to the defendant's detriment. The Judicial Committee of the Privy Council The Privy Council's Judicial Committee handles complaints from some Commonwealth countries and areas like the Channel Islands, lower courts will obey court decisions above them. Judges However, where the case is particularly important, there may be more judges on the panel. The Privy Council and Precedent The Privy Council's Judicial Committee is not part of English law, and its rulings are not binding on English courts. His decisions, however, are persuasive precedents, which courts may decide to follow in England and Wales. Typically the Privy Council Judicial Committee must obey the Supreme Court, and formerly the House of Lords, rulings. The exception to this is that in the nation from which the challenge originated, the point of law developed differently. In such a circumstance, the court is not bound by judgments of the Supreme Court and may decide to follow the country's laws. An unusual case was A.G. for Jersey v. Holly, 2005, which was Jersey's challenge on the rule of retaliation, a specific conditional remedy against killing. The extra-large jury of nine judges was used to decide the case, all of whom were themselves law lords. We refused to follow an earlier decision of the House of Lords in our v. Smith, Morgan James, 2000, by a vote of six to three judges. However, the rule in Jersey was the same as in England. The majority of judges actually said that Smith's decision was wrong. It created problems because, in a later case, the same question of fact was put before the Court of Appeal, Criminal Division. Should the Court of Appeal adopt Smith's ruling of the House of Lords, or should it obey Holly's judgment of the Privy Council? The Court of Appeal will usually be constrained by any House of Lords ruling. The Court of Appeal, though, made the unprecedented decision to follow the Privy Council judgment rather than the House of Lords rule. This was mostly because six House of Lords judges made the decision in Holly, even though the Privy Council was actually dealing with the issue.